couple of minutes from our July 21st, 2009 meeting. Anyone have any questions, comments, additions, subtractions, whatever, to the minutes? Hearing none, any motions? <laughs> Barbara, sorry. Uh, she's deferring to me. Beth, Beth, go ahead. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Barbara seconded. Motion having been made in, by Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion? Thank you. Motion carries 6 nothing. Uh, first substantive item on the agenda is we have the Cape Elizabeth Family Medicine Site Plan Amendment. The applicant or their representative could step up to the microphone, introduce themselves, and make their presentation. We will consider it. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark Wilcox. I'm an architect in Cape Elizabeth and I've been working with Craig Johnson. And I'd like to give you a sort of a brief overview. I'll give you an over. I want to do a little bit of an overview uh, that I left out last time, a sort of a neighborhood overview. Uh, then, uh, basically, uh, a couple of uh, things on the site plan itself. Uh, the, uh, the town engineer had asked about the silk fence line, so I kind of made that bolder and put a new detail on. Some some of the things uh, were in the original set, and so without the full two sets side by side. Uh, we'll, uh, let's not bother with that. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. approach. Okay, let's try this first. I'll just see if, let's see if I can match the story. Okay. I'll start a little bit with an overview uh, that just shows the, uh, the neighborhood, if you will, uh, something that I hadn't shown before. Uh, the property in question is right here. Here's the existing parking lot, and this is the site for the building. Uh, overall, uh, you can see here uh, some of the drainage features of the neighborhood. Uh, the town parking lot right now, a lot of the water from the town parking lot drains into a wetland or a vernal a bog sort of structure right here. Uh, water from this parking lot where we're putting the building right now kind of flows through through the woods, eventually down to uh, wet stro wet a wet area down here. Uh, we can look at this uh, in a little better detail uh, right here. Uh, where you can see the proximity of the uh, house to the east. Uh, this is the Rand's house in their backyard. They have another, they have an outbuilding garage here and then another bit of backyard back here. Uh, this is the area where the building would go. Uh, this dark area, I think, uh, is, a, is just a shadow. I've been down in there and it's not really a pond or a, or a wet area. 
this, whereas that one might be. And we can look at a couple of things that I included uh, in the new package that we sent that we sent out with additional information this month. Uh, on this plan, the uh, changes to sort of help uh, document uh, things a little bit were added the uh, legend, because the legend before the full legend was on the overall site plan. And the, uh, the silt fence line was pumped up into sort of a heavier uh, denotation, so you can sort of clearly see where the sort of no cut, no fill, no touch boundary of, of the site is. Mm -hmm. That was a, you know, a very light line uh, last time. And uh, next page. Uh, this was a sheet that includes an erosion control plan for the site and a uh, sort of larger, clearer version of the silt, silt fence. Uh, since the town engineer asked for an erosion control plan, uh, this goes a little bit further than what was on the original plans. The original plans just said disturbed the area would have six inches of loam and seed, whereas this is a sort of a, a real erosion control plan that says uh, uh, but erosion will be taken care of by loam and seed, with different types of loam and seed for uh, late fall plantings over the winter, and uh, with the time frames for a normal planting to ensure a, cat, a catch of grass. So, so it's a little bit more than what we had the first time around, but it is what an engineer would refer to as an erosion control plan. Uh, finally, uh, we added a uh, what I'm calling a, uh, an elevation reference plan. The uh, town engineer uh, requested uh, a benchmark, some benchmark information for the site. And the topo that uh, was used for the project uh, back to 2002 and 2004 uh, was based on the topo that was shot of the land uh, prior to the addition of the parking lot. Uh, however, the uh, benchmark at town center uh, is called out and some structures in the parking lot of the existing town hall uh, are called out just for, for reference in terms of setting the elevation of the garage itself. Uh, other than that, That one thing that I'm going to have to uh, ask you for a little bit of imagination for, because it was on the PowerPoint that wouldn't open, is the elevations and size of the garage have remained the same basically from the original application. Uh, however, we would like uh, you to consider uh, the possibility of adding a cupola, approximately that would be two feet square. Uh, in this location, as seen from the south, uh, and in this location, as seen from the north, uh, which means you wouldn't see it at all from the east, but you would see it a little bit from the, from the west, peeking up behind the ridge. And I'm sorry that the file didn't open for that, but uh, I can uh, submit further information on that. Let's just see if this one. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to. Are you, done your right you done your presentation? Yes, I am. Okay, what we'll do now is uh, open a public hearing.
Anyone who's going to speak concerning the uh, Cape Family Medicine Site Plan Amendment? Anyone wishing to speak concerning the Cape Family Medicine Site Plan Amendment? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and open up the floor to questions and comments from either the planning town planner or members of the board. Barbara? Um, I have just one question, and that is about the um, overhead utility line. Have you gotten approval from the abutter and the central main power for that? Uh, no, we do not have uh, an easement yet. Uh, and we don't have a confirmation from Central Main Power, which actually has to have an account open for the new structure uh, in order to do so. Uh, but we do realize that there are constraints on how power is fed to the new building, uh, so that that would be something that if it doesn't work as <coughs> it's shown on the plans, we'd be able to bring information back to you or, or Maureen as to, as to how we do it. We can just make it a condition as well. That's, that's right. We, we, I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you can't run either underground or overhead power through a buffer. Depends. Really? Okay. <laughs> I, we, coming in, the, uh, the pole top transformer that we were looking at is sort of just right outside the end of the existing garage, the town center, the, the town hall garage, sort of right on the lot line there. Okay. No set, Barbara? Yeah. Any, any, any other questions? Any, uh, any board members have feeling about the cupola? My feeling is no, I would not. make. There was a coupe, they were proposing a cupola on the building, and I personally didn't matter to me. Maureen, do you have any uh, issues with that? About, about the size of this. No, it's fine. Very You're all set. Right. Okay. Uh, if there's no other input or questions from the board, I open the floor to motions. Barbara? Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Dr. Craig Johnson of Cape Medi Family Medical. Located at 1226 Shore Road is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan to relocate and change a previously approved storage building which requires review under section 19-9-6 site plan amendments. <clears throat> the applicant intends to extend electrical service to the garage from the abutting private property but has not yet obtained permission from the abutter or CMP. Three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dr. Craig Johnson of Cape Family Medical, Cape Family Medicine located at 1226 Shore Road to amend the previously approved site plan to relocate and change a previously approved storage building be approved subject to the following conditions. That written permission from the abutter and CMP be provided to extend overhead electrical service to the new garage or alternative plan that extend electrical service from the main building be submitted to the town. Two, that no building permit be issued or alteration of the site occur until the above condition has been met. Motion having been made, do I hear a second? Second. Uh, motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel and seconded by uh, Beth Richardson. Do you have a question? I have a request. Oh, sure. Um, because the applicant has submitted elevations of what the building is supposed to look like, when he actually builds it, it's supposed to look like that. You may want to put some kind of condition in your approval that recognizes you're okay with the cupola. Oh. Uh -huh. Sure. That's out of three. Number three. Actually, it would be a new two, right? Number two. Oh, yeah, right. Number two. Um, and the current two will become three. <laughs> okay. Two. Can we just say that the applicant uh, has planning board permission to add a small cupola to the roof of the garage? In the location. I would say in the location represented. In the location represented. At the present, by the presentation. Uh, motion having been, the motion having been amended by Barbara. Do we, there's a second we'll amendment as yes. well? You all set? No, I don't have the word. Um, that the applicant be permitted to add okay. a small cupola in the location depicted by the presentation, by the planning board presentation, or the presentation to the planning board. I guess that's enough. Okay. Unless motion having been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries six nothing. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item on the agenda tonight, the Mahoney Resource Protection Permit.
the uh, applicant could step up to the podium, identify themselves, and make the presentation consider it. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent uh, Annie and Mike Mahoney for their application for a resource protection permit. Um, the Annie and Mike um, are purchasing lot one of the Automatide subdivision, which is the first lot on the right as you enter. Um, and it, the lot, the buildable land area is separated from the road by a, a small drainage swale that runs parallel with the road in this location here. And the access driveway that was shown, that was designated on the subdivision plan uh, to access lot one was located approximately in this location along the southerly boundary line uh, in an area that was a former farm road. And given the siting of the home, which is uh, roughly in the, in the central portion of the, of the lot, um, and with the garage on the northerly side, um, having the driveway on the southerly side wasn't really appropriate. It, it would have resulted in a uh, lengthy driveway starting at this point here, traversing across the front of the house uh, to the garage. So our proposal is to shift the access drive point off autumn tides. Uh, I believe it's 45 feet in a northerly direction and enter at this point here, uh, which would then result in additional wetland impact um, across the wetland. Uh, the wetland is um, an RP2 wetland that was uh, delineated by Mark Hampton associates as part of the autos, autumn uh, tide subdivision. Um, so we would be uh, crossing at this point here um, and uh, accessing the, the garage at this point. Uh, the total wetland impact is 980 square feet, which when added to the uh, total wetland impact of the subdivision is still under the 4,300 square feet of um, the threshold for DEP, for a permit by rule application. Um, we uh, made an attempt to minimize the amount of wetland. Uh, we narrowed up the driveway as much as we could. Um, we have a, uh, there's a proposed culvert under the driveway. Uh, that will connect to an existing culvert, uh, which will allow the, the drainage to flow um, as it does today. Uh, and we are not into the, uh, the more sensitive uh, wetlands, which are on this end. Uh, we <clears throat> Actually, there was only uh, one uh, request by uh, Steve Harding and that was to uh, locate the uh, utilities on the, on the plan, which we have done and are included in your packet. 
uh, the sewer, the water, and the underground electric telephone and cable. So that, that really was the only uh, revision to the plans, and other than that, um, it's as we originally presented. All set? All set. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, open a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on the Mahoney Resource Protection Permit application? Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and open up the floor to questions from the board or comments or questions from the panel. It's just a drafting thing. I'm assuming le north is to the left on the two views you got there, right? You rotated it from the key plan. Is yeah, that I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, north is for the two two of these plans. North is in that direction. Yeah. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. I bet I stand corrected because you had the other one there. I didn't see that done there. Questions from the board? Oh. Beth. A motion to the board to consider. Findings of fact, uh, one, Michael and Andy Mahoney are requesting a resource protection permit to alter 980 square feet of wetland with a driveway crossing for a lot located at one autumn tides lane which requires review for compliance with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Two, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Michael and Andy Mahoney for a resource protection permit to alter 980 square feet of wetland with a driveway crossing for a lot located at one autumn tides lane be approved. A motion having been made by Beth Richardson. Do I hear a second? Uh, Eliza Quinn. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carry six nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the Tara site plan. and I represent uh, uh, Shore Road Tara LLC. Uh, the property is a 10,460 square foot lot located on Shore Road um, at 553 Shore Road. Uh, the property uh, has a uh, a two and a half story Victorian style structure located on it that was built in 1905 and is a small garage located in the rear corner of the property. Um, the property is located in the Business A district and abuts the RC district on the two southerly uh, property sides. Uh, the proposal consists of <clears throat> the conversion of the existing structure uh, to a multi-use building. The first floor would, uh, would be a small boutique retail shop. The second floor would consist of one or two office suites. And the third floor would be a, uh, a studio, a small studio apartment. Access to the property would be uh, roughly in the same location as it exists today, uh, although uh, we, will, we are proposing to widen the uh, entrance drive from 10 feet to 18 feet 
uh, to allow for better two-way circulation. Uh, we are required to have a total of 10, uh, yeah, 10 parking spaces for the proposed uses. Uh, there are six on site, including one handicapped space. Uh, there are three here and three in front of the garage. And the remaining four spaces are proposed to be located off site, roughly in this location here, which would be next to the fire station. Uh, pedestrian circulation consists of a, we're proposing to construct a brick walk uh, along the frontage of Shore Road. Um, as well as a brick walk along the parking stalls leading into the uh, entrance. Uh, a crosswalk has been added to the plans um, as recommended by, I believe it was the planning board, um, in this location here, which is uh, directly opposite and in between the fire station and the former cookie jar. Um, so the uh, the people parking off-site would um, circulate down in front of the fire station, cross Shore Road in this location here, and then connect to our brick sidewalk. <coughs> uh, there is a uh, single uh, light fixture, pole-mounted light fixture, located adjacent to the parking area. Uh, this would be a 100-watt metal halide fixture with a house shield and a cutoff lens to, minis to minimize any extraneous light uh, spill. Um, and it would be mounted on a 12 foot high pole. Uh, the, in addition to that, there are two sign lights located on either side of the freestanding sign located here. Uh, for fencing and screening, we're proposed, uh, proposing to um, install a six foot high uh, solid wood fence in a scallop style uh, along this boundary line. Uh, we're proposing to continue the six foot high solid uh, picket fence located on the rear property line and uh, another six foot high solid wood fence uh, along this property line which would begin 10 feet off the rear corner and then extend to a point uh, roughly eight feet beyond the existing maple tree. Uh, the, re the remaining boundary line would uh, consist of a vegetative buffer consisting of uh, evergreen, hemlock trees, and uh, broadleaf shrubs. There are three ornamental crab apples located uh, in the Esplanade along Shore Road. We have some additional plantings located in the perennial garden, and we have added three lilac uh, shrubs in, the, in this corner of the property, as requested by the abutter. Uh, th that's just a, a general overview of the project. Um, uh, the, uh, I'd like to review with the board the, uh, the, the revisions that have been made to the plan. Um, just going down my July 24th uh, letter to the planning board. Um, a signed lease agreement for the off-site parking is included in your packet that has a three-year term to it. Uh, as I mentioned, the painted crosswalk has been designated here and it's been reviewed by Bob Malley. Uh, the four off-site parking spaces will be identified with signage and there is a note on sheet 2, uh, note 11 on sheet 2, uh, that identifies uh, that requirement. The note parking sign will be placed on the fence in the turnaround area uh, in this location here. And finally, a tree preservation plan has been included in your packet uh, outlining um, measures to be taken by the contractor uh, to preserve existing vegetation on the property, primarily the, uh, the beech tree. Uh, plan revisions, uh, notes one, two, and three on page two of my letter uh, have to do with the elimination of uh, pavement within the five-foot setback. 
and that is in this area, we, have, we shifted it one foot in this area here and in the area of the turnaround. So that there's no pavement other than uh, the pavement in front of the garage that has existed for years. Uh, there is no pavement within the five foot setback. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we have added three lilac shrubs in the corner of the property. Um, signage has been added to the plans in front of the off-site parking spaces. Uh, number six, we have uh, working with the abutter, uh, this abutter, Jane Wayne, uh, we have agreed, uh, Lee has agreed to uh, remove the, uh, there's an old concrete walkway that is located that runs along that property line. Uh, we have agreed to remove that concrete from the her property and to replace uh, with uh, 10 inches of loam uh, as a planting bed for her to, um, to plant in. And those are, those are the only changes that have been made. Uh, we have uh, addressed Steve Harding's comments that we have a sealed boundary survey now. <coughs> and um, I think that was, that was it, um, as far as Steve is concerned. So with that, I'll, I'll close my presentation. Uh, I'd like to open up the public hearing and ask anyone wishing to speak concerning the uh, application of Tara LLC for the site plan to step up to the podium, identify yourselves, and make your comments. Evening. I'm uh, David Sanford, one of the abutters. Um, I uh, left a uh, letter from our Joyce, my wife Joyce is and my attorney. Um, at your places. Uh, <clears throat> I think most of the issues, uh, and that, that letter has to do with matters of boundary and uh, uh, trees and shrubs and so forth, uh, that came out of discussions with Lee Wilson or with her email to us. I think almost all of them were addressed by uh, John Mitchell. Um, And I, I think the, other, the only other thing I want to say at this point is that I, I want to compliment the board for their serious consideration of the differences that we've had uh, with Lee Wilson about this matter. And I also want to uh, thank John Mitchell uh, and yeah, to thank John Mitchell uh, and Lee Wilson for. Uh, their willingness to uh, take into consideration our needs for uh, uh, lilacs and, uh, and trees and so forth along the boundary line. Uh, there, were, there are a couple of issues that we still don't uh, agree on, but basically I, I think we've reached uh, as much agreement as we can possibly manage. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the application of uh, Terra LLC for site plan review? Anyone else wishing to speak? Harry Hyde, Six Channels Road. Uh, a few issues that, that I'm concerned about and, and have some questions about. One is there, a handi there is a handicap parking spot on site, as I understand it. And I also understand that the town has no authority to enforce that. I've asked the police chief, I've asked several other people, and they say that since it's on private property, it's the goodwill of the owner of the property, unless the town, you know, forces them into an agreement whereby the town can enforce the handicapped parking. I think that. What, what do you mean by enforce? In other words, if, if people park in a handicap and they don't have a handicap plate, they get tagged. Oh, oh. You know, that's what enforcement is. No, I understand. All right. Uh, 
Another concern I have is access to Shore Road. Now, back in June, there was a uh, garage sale at that site. And so I did uh, two little stints where I observed the traffic coming and going. And I saw a number of things that, that were concerning. I saw three different automobiles parked in the no parking zone. I saw one automobile parked across the entrance to 551 and proceed into the garage sale. I saw another lady drive into the 551 parking lot and run over to 553. I saw, in the course of 25 minutes, I saw a number of automobiles packed on Shore Road where the, you know, it's kind of narrow, the, the, uh, I call it a bike path, I guess it isn't. It's, uh, anyway, the edge, edge of the road. And I saw a number of people park there and open the doors into the yard coming into the traffic coming from behind them. I saw, uh, while I was there, I saw three vehicles exit the property and every one of them backed out as opposed to driving out. And out of the three, two of them had to wait for somebody on Shore Road to stop. Uh, in crossing, in backing out, if they're heading to South Portland, they got to back out across two lanes. I didn't see anybody do that. I saw one car backed out, waited, somebody finally stopped. They backed out, they continued down Shore Road till they hit Charles. They made a right on Charles and apparently went up Warren, made a right on Woodland, and a minute later they reappeared at the end of Woodland in South Portland. And I think you're encouraging that. And I think it's important to remember there are 16 children on Warren Avenue, many of them preschool. And there are four children between Woodland and Shore Road. And two of them, I think, preschool. I think we have to be concerned about encouraging people to use that as a kind of a bypass. And so, Mr. Mitchell indicated at the, the uh, hearing you had, the workshop you had, mm -hmm. it was very simple to back up and come out head first. Well, it's, it's not an easy thing, and it certainly won't be easy in the winter. Now, they're going to put a fence to that. So obviously the town should be quiet that they remove the snow so that people can, you know, back in there and come out head first. And I, and I honestly don't think that that's going to happen, you know, unless it's enforced. Uh, now those are, you know, those are the concerns that I have. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the uh, application of Terra LLC for site plan review? Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Last call. Anyone wishing to speak concerning Terra LLC site, site plan review application? Hearing none, I'd like to uh, close the public hearing and open the floor to questions and comments from the town planner or members of the board. Lorraine, do you have any questions or comments? Board members? Yeah, I have a couple. Go ahead. Um, with respect to the letter that we've received today, um, it notes, and, and I don't believe that this has been incorporated into the existing presentation or the, or the uh, materials that we've been provided, that there are additional trees. And I, I'd like some kind of uh, explanation with regard to that and whether or not the applicant has agreed to what's in the letter. Uh, in particular, there, in the first paragraph, it, it appears that the um, that the author of this letter suggests that the applicant has agreed to plant three six-foot-tall Canadian hemlocks, and there are a number of other things in here that I would like resolution of. I believe what she is referring to is, or are the three Canadian hemlocks that are located between the two maple trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So is there anything in this letter that is objectionable to the applicant? Well, I, I mean, I just received it. Um, Understandable. And I, I, uh, I scanned it quickly. I scanned it quickly, and I don't believe there is. I, nothing jumped out at me on this. If we were to attach this to our approval, would there be an objection to doing so? Um, I think you need to look at the end of the letter. Well, to the extent that there are some non-agreements. There are, yes, on, on page two, yeah. the last two paragraphs. Right. Um, I, I think what Tom... Lattice work on the porch. And right. So there, there, may not, there are things you may not want to attach to stuff. Well, and I, <laughs> I think what I'd be interested in doing is the bulleted points that they agree, they've agreed to. We just want to make sure it gets done. I think that's what Tom's going that's with. My I'm not looking to force them to agree to any of this other stuff. No, ne but neither am I. I to the so. extent that it is specifically stated in here, that they have not been agreed to, mm. certainly I'm not attaching that as any condition to approval. However, to the extent that there are specific things in here that have been agreed to, I think we should. Uh, I would echo that, but I also just give the applicant a chance to sort of make sure that go th they go through it and that does reflect what you right. agreed to, <laughs> since you just got it. Yeah. And I, uh, wait a second, Barbara. You all said Tom? Okay, Barbara. I think that most of those points, and, and you can check to be sure, John, I think most of those points are mentioned about the plantings and the fencing. That's all on the plans already. At least I believe that it is. I think the only things that may not be, and certainly that as far as noise control is concerned, there are limitations on the hours that Lee can operate her business based on the zoning regulations that I think covers it may not be quite that, but it's pretty stringent. And the other thing is the garage use and that. I didn't see that anywhere, and I don't know about that. But I think most of the other things you have on the plans, and I sort of, I, I don't think I'd favor attaching this letter because I do feel there are some things. As far as parking on Shore Road is concerned, that's really up to the town of Cape Elizabeth. That is not up to the person who's running who owns the property, I don't believe, because she doesn't have control over the public roads in Cape Elizabeth, and I don't think it's fair to ask her to do that. Well, so in respect to what you say, sir, I, I just don't see how that can be done without enlisting the police. Excuse me. If, if, if you're going to make a comment, you need to step up to, the, to respond to a question. Are you asking him a question? No, I'm not. I'm just saying that in respect, I think that, that we, it is very unfair ask the property owner to do that. Well, I understand. I, I, and Barbara, just as I understand it, Tom's not asking the applicant to agree to that. I think what I he's concerned about is that if the bulleted points on pages one and two, so about most of the way down, uh, are in fact what they've agreed to, that we put that in there. I, I also agree with Barbara. I think most of this is in the plan. I agree, too. There's one particular thing that I would like to point out, though, and I, and I don't know whether or not that's been agreed to. There will be no or there would be no services provided on the porch by the Tara commercial establishments. I'm not certain that that is a zoning issue. Um, I think that's a contractual issue as between the applicant and, and, and what we've approved. I just want a clarification with respect to that. And frankly, I think all those bullet points, um, I, I don't know what's been the, the subject of the negotiation. So I Tom, I believe in the new zoning code for um, VA district, there is a very specific regulation that the town council added about the number of hours, the hours of operation, and when people can have be outside, I believe it's six or seven o'clock. Is it not, Maureen? I'm looking for my zoning code. A lot of time on that. So it is very specific in the zoning code right now. And what does that mean? That there would that, that the oh, establishment is not permitted to have any outdoor activities? I've got the code book here. At least I thought it. Okay. Right, but the zoning code would always help provide whatever we permit it. Meaning contractually if the parties agree. They can cut back on what the zoning permits them to use. Um, as of July 8th, the establishment in this district shall comply with the following hours of operation. If you're within 100 feet of a residential district and every single property on Shore Road in the BA district comes under this category, Establishments where a building or parking is located within 100 feet of a residential district shall not be open to customers between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. 
if such establishment holds a liquor license, and this, this, pro this property can't even do that because they're limited in their uses from doing any kind of food service. Um, no seating service or other organized gatherings shall be allowed outdoors after 6 p.m. No alcohol should be served outdoors at any time. Uh, let's see. And there are very big there are limits. The, this property doesn't have the same access to all the permitted uses in the BA district. It's, it's got a subset of that. It doesn't it say something, isn't there something about a porch after a certain hour? Yeah, but there, they can't, it says that if you can't have um, seating service or other organized gatherings outdoor after 6 p.m. if you have a liquor license. And this property, you know, they can get a liquor license if they want, but they're not going to be able to use it because they're not allowed to be a, a, they're not allowed to have a business that can serve food. So it can be like a gift shop with a liquor license where they can't serve liquor. <laughs> what? I think it's rather a, a moot point because actually I offices. disagree. I, I, I think that uh, the question that I have is during the business hours, will there be services provided on the out exterior porch? Merchandise, any form of service. I don't think so. Um, what well, I, I guess, if, if I understand it correctly, we don't have any intention of any sort of business to operate out there. But what I was concerned about in constricting and restricting the property was there is going to be eventually a tenant on the third floor, which is a residential tenant, and tenants on the second floor, which are office type people not associated with the first floor mm -hmm. notwithstanding also the, th the first floor i mean if it's a beautiful sunny day i don't want to restrict myself and any of my customers employees or anybody to not be able to sit on the porch like the residents um surrounding us and, and i and i would completely respect that and that's yeah. the reason why i raise it as a point right. it appears in here yeah. that it's been agreed to and, yeah. I, and and i'm not sure that's the case i suppose I think that it's, um, I don't know if it's been agreed to. I think that there's still um, hesitations on the abutters' um, behalf because they, they just don't know what to expect. Sure. And we won't know really until next summer. Um, but just from a practical standpoint, we don't have any intentions of um, sort of going above and beyond what someone would normally use their porch for. Okay, thank you. Peter? Oh, sorry, Beth. That's okay. I'm um, trying to figure out. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's true. Um, I agree with Barbara that I would rather not have this letter attached to the application as part of our process and rely solely on the plans that have been presented to us, which have met the requirements um, that we passed on and that, that the town engineer has passed on because of the uncertainty that's, that's in here. Um, I went through the plan carefully, obviously we just got this letter tonight, it seems to me and from listening to John's presentation that the agreed upon things in the first couple of bullets, the plantings, the, the fences, um, even the removal of the walkway on the abutters property and the preparation of a planting bed which seems more than accommodating um, is all on the plan. So there's enough uncertainty here that I would prefer we go strictly with what has been presented to us, which seems to address the significant boundary issues and the planting issues that the uh, abutters have raised. I agree. I agree with that. And I just want to add that there's uh, the last bullet point says that um, Tara would pay for the tearing up and removal of the concrete. And uh, I had assumed from the plans that um, you would actually contract that work rather than having the abutter contract it and reimbursing her. And, um, so for that, if it's clear in the plan mm. how that work would be undertaken, we should stick with the plan. I actually don't see that that's clear, but I think that's uh, an important issue there is, between the two <coughs> owners. There is a note on the plan on sheet, uh, yeah. on sheet two. Yeah. It's a label that um, it designates that, that the concrete walkway shall be removed 
and it's part of these documents. Yeah. And will Tara be re conducting the work yes. with the contract? Okay, that's with what I assumed when I read the plan. Contract. Okay, yeah. yep. I'm, I'm glad that the board agreed not to include this with the condition, because as I read this more carefully, I think in general, the, the plans reflect these bullets, but Peggy has a lot of detailed dimensions in here that don't necessarily agree with the plan. The plan illustrates what our understanding, meeting with the neighbors, um, that's, that's what the plan uh, reflects. But there are, there are uh, I don't know whether there was a misunderstanding on Peggy's part or not, but uh, there are some dimensions here that aren't consistent with the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question for Maureen. Uh, Do we need an easement for Tara to be conducting the work on Ms. Wanning's property? No. No? I, okay. Because I, my understanding is it's the, the abutter is inviting them on to her property okay. for a one-time improvement. Okay. So, because you know, they, they're only doing this because the abutters asked them to do it. And they're not going to maintain it post no. work. No. They're going to okay. do the work, create the bed, right. and then they're done. Okay. I have one question. Just sure, Barbara. A curiosity question, John. We talked about that little berm. That, and I can't tell from the, the drawing the, the rock, uh, you know, a little rock uh, garden. Is yes. that all going to come down now? We, we looked at that. Um, we, we talked during the site visit, we talked about Other uh, ways. sweeping the walk around that lake of rough. And in looking at it in detail, looking at the grading, uh, we had to meet ADA requirements, which it's means fine. a 5% you know, slope handrail. And it just um, didn't work. It didn't work. Okay. It uh, created a, a very uh, uh, a walkway that I don't think would be used. It's fine. Uh, Just curious. More than yep. anything else. Yep. That's all. A question for Maureen about the sidewalk who, um, and the crosswalk. Who, who will pay for the crosswalk to be painted? The, the applicant um, will be responsible for installing the crosswalk. I mean, Frankly, the public works director has the roads striped every year, and I know that because I do the striping map for him. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't add this on to his task, and then the applicant can just reimburse uh, for that. But I, what I heard was $50. It's just it's a small amount. That's a bargain. I would like to say publicly so that those of you from the public who are here, that is going to help the traffic situation on Shore Road because it's going to force people to look and make sure nobody is there. So I think maybe people will go a little bit slower. We'll see. The jury's out, but it might help. It can't hurt. Any other questions? Well, I just want to make a statement that I think it would be really helpful to have the crosswalk extend to the north of the property to connect um, 553 with the rest of the business district. And um, I, I guess a, a question for Maureen that I want to ask publicly is, is it crosswalk or sidewalk? Oh, sorry, sidewalk. Thank you, sidewalk. Um, what are our options for doing that? And then I think Zippo. the more logical place <laughs> to have the crosswalk would be in front of 551. The, so town, people would yeah. walk across the the apron of the fire department. I, and I answer this question being a huge supporter of sidewalks and would love to see them extended throughout this particular district. However, um, typically we do not require applicants to install sidewalks in areas where they don't own the property. Um, there's, a, there's a, an essential nexus kind of test. They could turn around and say, you know, we're not creating the need for that sidewalk. We agree there is one. Mm -hmm. um, the town has actually been, in my opinion, fairly progressive in requiring individual property owners to install the sidewalk when they trigger site plan review. So incrementally, we, we do okay with getting sidewalk extensions. Um, but it would be very difficult to get this particular applicant to um, install sidewalk to meet an existing need. And I'm not a proponent of that but in terms of getting the town to do it. And it would really benefit this whole business district. 
you to know, have the, sidewalks. The town council has a capital improvement budget that they work on every single year. Mm -hmm. um, there's a sidewalk budget, and certainly the planning board could communicate a recommendation to the council, um, mm -hmm. but in the end, it's really a financial issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. thanks. And I'd like to make a public comment as well. I want to commend the applicant for um, the mitigation that they've performed, the conversations they've had with their neighbors, um, in particular for the striped crosswalk. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I stated this previously publicly, and I want to state it again, that I do not believe that the intended use for this site um, is appropriate given the parking and circulation. Um, and for that matter, I just simply can't uh, support it. I do believe that we did the right thing in um, the VA zoning amendments, um, but unfortunately, I can't support this particular plan. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll open up the floor to motions for the board to consider. Uh, Beth? I have a motion for the board to consider. Uh, finding of fact. One, Shore Road Tara LLC is requesting site plan review for change of use of an existing building located at 553 Shore Road from single family home to a multi use building of retail office multifamily unit, which requires review under Section 9 9 site plan regulations and the new BA district requirements in Section 9 6 5. Two, the application substantially complies with Section 9-9 site plan regulations and Section 9-6-5 BA district design standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Shuro Tara LLC for site plan review for change of use of an existing building located at 553 Shore Road from single family home to a multi-use building of retail office multifamily unit be approved. Do I hear a second? Jim Hubner. The uh, motion having been made by Beth Richardson and seconded by Jim Hubner. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? All those opposed to the motion? The motion carries five to one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next item we have on the agenda is the Crescent Beach Retirement an assisted living community site plan. time to others the um, proposal uh, the development and uh, Elizabeth will follow up if, if there's questions with regard to um, specific um, questions on on the uh, right title of interest um, or uh, any specific questions that the applicant has with regard to sales and yeah, we're, we're here on behalf of uh, Maine, uh, Maine Savings Bank Savings Banks of Maine and 
I'm going to use a pointer here. I won't hit anybody. So that we have a, a five-acre site. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the former Viking uh, nursing home. It's uh, surrounded essentially by uh, wetlands here. The different colors here are, are your uh, primary, uh, and these are the secondary uh, RP2 and RP1 wetlands. The uh, site is, um, has a, a substantial existing buffer. That's what these darker trees are. And some of these lighter trees here are existing trees that are being preserved. Um, the, the proposal at hand is essentially the same as it was uh, when the board approved it in 2007 and extended in 2008, which is essentially to remove the one story um, it was the, actually the nursing home portion of the facility. This two-story existing building is going to remain and still hold uh, 55 uh, beds for the um, assisted living. And this new two-story building here, as shown, will have the uh, 40 uh, uh, unit, uh, uh, senior um, unit apartments. Um, some of the pluses here in terms of what we're doing, in, uh, none of the uh, development impacts uh, the wetlands. Um, and like I mentioned, we're preserving uh, the existing buffer along here. Um, what's changed is essentially we actually have uh, these two existing entrances are now joined by a new uh, drive. So their internal circulation vehicular is a lot better. We actually are increasing, um, we're adding a, 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 a sidewalk and a curb along here, which there is none now. Um, the building itself has kind of shrunk a little bit in terms of the footprint. Uh, if you looked on uh, some of your plans, they had a demolition plan that shows the outline of what's being removed. And there's a, a larger piece that butts out here. Uh, there's a connection in here. So those are being removed. So the impervious area is being decreased, which actually helps with regard to the overall uh, runoff of the site, which has been uh, decreased, not increased. Um, there's also a new uh, pedestrian walkway that connects along this side of the, of the building, too. So now we actually have uh, pedestrian circulation all the way around the, the building. Um, the, I think the, in terms of landscape, we're focusing on uh, a new entrance here, a new seating area that comes in and um, along the side here, accenting the building along with increasing uh, some bump outs that actually help with regard to the view into the site. Um, we're, remo we're removing the um, propane, we're consolidating the propane tanks. Uh, that are, I think are three or four of them exist here. We're going to bring them down and put them all together in the rear of the building. There's a new, we're also relocating the dumpster. And, uh, what's that mean? Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing. Um, we actually are uh, in, basically enclosing the, the existing dumpster or, or creating a new dumpster enclosed here, uh, making a better appearance for the site. Um, as I mentioned, stormwater is not a problem, and, and traffic is also not a problem uh, with regard to the actual trips are, are reduced. Uh, we're actually having less. Uh, So I, I think uh, in terms of trips, there's a, a decrease in the number of uh, vehicles would be uh, coming and going from the site as well. Um, I think it would probably, uh, the board be amenable to that. I, I, I could take further detailed questions on that. I'm not sure if Elizabeth would want to discuss or if the board had specific questions with regard to the, the applicants. Um, interests and, and the uh, specific questions about the right title and interest. So there any specific questions I can answer that I haven't answered in the presentation at this point, or do you want to move on to 
Elizabeth? I have a design question. Okay, great. What was your reason for not extending the paved driveway all around the site to improve the access for the apartment dwellers? Back here, right here. Yeah. yeah it increases the amount of total impervious mm -hmm. area, which is something that is a threshold, as well as being within. We have a, a hundred, a hundred uh, year floodplain right here. And then we, we get very close to the wetland impact, so pulling a, a road all the way through would also uh, in, incur on grading and, and more impacts to the, to the landscape and the existing uh, resource. So that's probably one of the major reasons. Um, we, we did put this in, and we did actually just barely get in our, um, in terms of the amount of impervious area within not exceeding the amount of stormwater running off the site. So <laughs> it's tight, but we can still say that we're not reducing, or we are reducing the stormwater runoff. Gotcha, because my main concern is how attractive a plan will this be for a bidder? Um, because obviously we want somebody to develop this mm -hmm. site, but what's the likelihood that they will bid on it and develop it you know, as depicted? in these plans and might that be an impediment to um, selling the units or renting them out if people can't park, elderly people can't park well, you know, near their apartment? Oh, near their apartment? Well, I think that the... They can. Those, those, those aren't apartments. This is that's assisted, assisted living. Oh, that's the assisted and living. Is, yeah. and that's oh, the for a Thank you very much. The, Barbara, the, whole, the whole facility <laughs> runs together. I mean, essentially, it's run as one facility. So. I, People who are visiting assisted living can park here and, and make their way through. So. Gotcha. Thank you. All set? Yes. Yeah, we have a here in the side. No, we have a few procedural things to carry. Okay. I have one a question too. There was a question initially about the seven propane tanks. Yes. Now have you I I can't show us again where they are. They're right here. They're all and are there seven? There, there are seven there. Oh, okay. I, oh, I see them. One, two, three. They're, they're, they're they sideways. Have, yeah, they're, yes. <laughs> That's fine. And, I um, see them. Yeah, they run um, parallel to the end of the building, which was actually a, uh, probably a requirement of, uh, of the fire uh, chief, because uh, essentially when these things blow, they want to go in a direction where there's something not there. And then uh, we also have bollards and, and also screening at the same time. Because uh, they're not on our plans. I mean, I always see They're four. not on your plans? Well, I must be looking wrong, but this is from 2007. So. No, they've been revised, so they should uh, show them. Oh, I see them. There they are. Never mind. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else uh, have any questions of the applicant? Actually, we have a couple of things, procedural things. We're taking this as a big package in terms of our procedure. So first thing I need, is the applicant done their presentation, or do, do you have something else to present? No, uh, OK. So let's, let's uh, consider completeness first. Um, Beth? I have a motion for the board to consider uh, with regard to completeness. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Savings Bank of Maine for reapproval of the building located at 126 Scott Dyer Road for 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments be deemed complete. Second. A motion having been made and seconded, um, made by uh, Beth Richardson and seconded by, by Barbara Schenkel. Uh, do I have any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. The uh, application having been deemed complete and noticed tonight for a public hearing, I'm now going to open the public hearing on the application and invite members of the public to come and address their concerns. <laughs> going once, <laughs> going twice. Thank you, sir. The public hearing is now closed, and I'd like to open the floor up to questions, comments from the town planner and members of the planning board. I don't know who this is addressed to, but there's a notation in here, the applicant has a 45-day window in which to auction the property, and I'm curious as to why that is. I can address that. Um, as um, Chris introduced me, I'm Elizabeth Buckley. I'm a partner with Lambert, Kopp and Hahn in Portland and Bangor, and our client is Savings Bank of Maine. Um, if this, is a, this is a situation where we have a couple of court, um, we have one court order out of Oregon 
that's controlling to some degree the timing on the au auction. But then we also have main law that controls what can happen um, and how quickly a mortgagee can act under its power of sale and mortgage. Um, so I'll just take a brief minute to explain why Oregon is involved. Uh, and that is because the Securities and Exchange Commission brought an action that involved an injunction that froze all the assets of various entities, including Cape Elizabeth Senior Living Properties, LLC. And in order for the bank to take this property and act under its power of sale and mortgage, uh, there had to be a release of this asset from the freeze that was part of the Oregon order. So, and that order stated that the auction could not occur sooner than 45 days after the order was issued. So that's the window sooner? of time. Sooner then? You had to wait 45 days from the date of the order to conduct the auction? Correct. Okay. Correct. Huh? Didn't really understand that. So you have to wait at least 45 days after the order? So in other words, you have, you have a stay for 45 days, and then you can have the auction. Or does it have to occur within the 45-day window? After. It, it cannot occur sooner than 45 days after the order. And what's the date? What's the date of the order? That's a few, few weeks old at this point, right? Uh, well, I, I, I can't. The date of the the date of the order, it was filed um, July 8th, but um, we didn't receive it out of Oregon until uh, I believe it was last week or the week before that we made it available. Uh, and it came from counsel out in Oregon who was bird dogging this through that system. So we're, we're calculating at the uh, earliest possible date that it could be auctioned would be approximately 45 days from Uh, I want to say about July 30th, somewhere around that date. So I just want to make sure that I understand. So this is really expediency as opposed to necessity. What, what do you mean? Uh, that we can have the public hearing tonight. Right. As opposed to... And the background, as I understand it, is the... Uh, and Maureen, correct me if I state this, is... Uh, um, we're accommodating this with the express condition that this is exactly the same as we approved it before. Uh, in doing it, this abbreviated process to facilitate this sale. The Oregon order, as I understand it, simply allows the bank to go forward. Uh, so I, I don't know that that would be in our interest to put in any sort of, you know. No, I'm not proof. suggesting it. I just want sure. to understand. Sure. And then um, the second issue that came up in the discussion was was uh, the face mortgage was River Green Bank or something like that and I, I since found out apparently the applicant Savings Bank of Maine bought the River Green Bank a year and a half ago or whatever it was and there's plenty of documentation to prove that but uh, I didn't want to get to the point where we had a this approved and then they found out they didn't have their title ducks lined up but they're confident they have so no objection. Do you have any other questions? No. Um, I think the confusion is that this is stated incorrectly in here. And that's, that's what the confusion oh. is. But certainly the sooner we can get somebody to buy and get started on this property, the better off we are. Agreed. So. And, and I take it, it that this is exactly the same application uh, that we saw before in terms of the engineering. Yes, it, it, it's exactly ex with the with the exception that it, it includes all the conditions of approval, which oh, included right. some revisions to. So essentially, it's it's new and improved in the sense of what the board was expecting. Yeah, that. One, one thing that always bothered me on this approval was <laughs> the name is Crescent Beach. You know, frankly, Crescent Beach is nowhere near this place, and I thought <laughs> I thought it was misleading, but somebody out of Oregon looked at a map and said, well, let's name it something close by. So it's just nowhere in town near where the beach is, the Crescent Beach specifically. So I don't, I don't, I certainly, the new applicant may change the, I mean, the, the purchaser at the foreclosure auction might likely change the name anyway, just for marketing purposes. But I just thought it was a terrible 
name for the project. For the record, I wasn't involved. I ain't. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions, comments, annoyances? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, do I have a motion for the board to consider? Barbara? <coughs> Finding, <coughs> excuse me, maybe somebody else can read this. <coughs> Findings of fact um, one, Savings Bank of Maine is requesting, or thank you, reapproval of the building located at 126 Scott Dyer Road for 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments, which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Two, the applicant will be auctioning the property to a new owner. Three, the plans and materials submitted were originally approved by the Planning Board in August 2007, and it is in the town's interest if the property is not left vacant to further deteriorate. Four, the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Savings Bank of Maine for reapproval of the building located at 126 Scott Dyer Road for 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that any change in ownership will require an amendment to this approval for the Planning Board to review the financial and technical capability of the new owner. Two, that there be no issuance of a building permit nor commencement of work on the site, excluding general maintenance until the above condition is met. Second. I want to discuss one of the conditions. Sure. Um, the, the condition of the um, change of ownership requiring approval of the planning board. Um, uh, my concern is that th that may scare away some bidders, and I'm just wondering. Um, no, it's, it's solely, as I understand the condition, and maybe we want to clarify, to review the t financial and technical capability of the new owner. I mean, yep. So I, I guess openly, my question is, would that scare away some bidders, mm. not, a bidder not knowing um, how rigorous our process is, and did that condition prevent us from getting into the situation where we are now, where the previous owner um, went bankrupt, or that you know the the LLC that owned it, and I'm, I guess our, our intent is to get this thing developed right. and not scare away bidders. So I, I'm just sort of wanting to discuss um, right. uh, that condition and will it scare people away without actually giving us the protection that we intend it to? Sure. Um, Barbara, do you have a I, I have a response to that. Um, we are not the ones that are going to do that, Liza. We're never the ones that review technical and financial capability. We always get that from Mike McGovern. And this is just simply a condition. This doesn't mean they have to come back to us. Right. It, simply means, it, it means they have to come back to Mike McGovern. Mike and you, McGovern. you know what? We would, be, we would be very foolish if we didn't have this in here um, because it is true that the last people went bankrupt, they were from out of state. Mm -hmm. There was less of a way to control that. Yes. But without having any overview of financial capability, it would not be in the best interest of this town for us to abdicate this responsibility. I, I feel yeah, that I very strongly. Yeah, and, and um, I don't disagree that that's a possibility. I also don't want to scare away right. any viable bidders Anybody who, any who may not who, be familiar with the politics of Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Anybody who is going to have to get a loan, and anybody, especially today, now that we're not giving out money, I hope, willy-nilly, um, I hope, uh, understands that they have to prove financial capability. And so if this would scare away anybody, we don't have to worry about the person gotcha. so, going to so scare in your away. So it won't scare away anybody. That, I mean, you've got a lot of experience in that area. You know, I, I totally appreciate what you're saying. Oftentimes in a foreclosure sale, you wouldn't have conditions because of the, the due diligence that would be required. But I completely agree with Barbara on this one. If we uh, allowed an applicant or, or, or a potential purchaser to come in and own the property and try to develop it and not know whether or not they're going to complete the thing or they have the ability to do it, I think we, we're, we're in worse situation then than we are now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's what the discussion Mar I was Mar looking for. Maureen has a question. Okay. I, the other thing to keep, I mean, this does say it has to come back to the planning board. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, you've got a finding of fact that says that it's in the town's interest to have this property developed. 
you can show that the planning board turned this around in one night. I mean, I think it shows there's a lot of support by the town. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind, it's not out of the question that you won't, you'll see this anyway, because whoever buys it may not want to build exactly. exactly. Right, yeah, right. it's very likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Thanks. Maureen, in light of what you said, actually, Liza picked it up right and I didn't wrong. Maybe we need to say for the town manager, no, the planning board, they're going to come back this, to Well, and, you know, this was, I'll go back to my, the legal advice I've gotten in my last job is that financial and technical capability is a standard of site plan review that's okay. supposed to be administered by the planning board. You don't want to, you don't want to have an illegal delegation of your authority. That's fine. And remember, remember what that's supposed to ensure, though. Generally, it's to ensure that once the project started, in other words, it doesn't necessarily, I don't think it spooks away bidders because there's, they may bid on it, buy it, and then either come back for an amendment and basic, or, or, or frankly, they might flip it. They might sell it to another one, and then we're in, that's a, that would be a new approval. So, but I, I'm not worried that it's going to scare anyone away. Yeah, maybe their bid is conditional on the approval of the planning board. Mm, I don't, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Any more discussion on it? Okay, all in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bring us a good bidder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you had any interest expressed? Okay, next item on the agenda is the Town Center Amendments. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. We're going to look to Maureen to have our intro for this. All right, go ahead. I can bring it up on screen if you want it. No, 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 no. Does, does anybody want to take that time? We want to just review it. No. Go ahead. Okay, so what this is, is um, there are, in the, in the conference of play, there are recommendations to allow um, a greater density of multifamily units in the town center and the business aid district, and also to allow um, residential units in more than 50% of the building, as long as the first floor is non-residential. So these recommendations have already been implemented in the Business A District, and this would implement them in the Town Center District. We have a property owner in the Town Center District who has is indicated he is willing to move forward with something, and so we're, we're kind of pulling this out and, and giving it a little bit more streamlined approach. So line one, um, Page one, I'm sorry, um, of the of the text, um, you've got multifamily dwelling unit, and I just took out everything else. Um, and it's listed as a permitted use uh, under H on page three. This is the exact same language that you've already adopted in the business A district, mm -hmm. and then on page four. Um, what you're proposing to do is to reduce the amount of land required per dwelling unit from 7,500 to 3,000. And I do want to point out that up above, under minimum lot area, you're still requiring that they need to have a lot that's at least 7,500 square feet in size. Now you can change that, you can leave it. Um, there are advantages to, to leaving it so that you at least have a critical mass of land that should be able to take, has a chance of meeting the standards for a multifamily unit. And okay. that's the, that's the, the extent of the text. The procedure, Maureen. Yes. You made the presentation. This is notice for public hearing, correct? That's right. That's right. And to now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak? Oh, uh, no, no. You, you, you need to table it to a public hearing for next month. Oh, I thought it was not noticed for tonight as no, a public hearing. No, no. Oh. Normally, you would do that when you really want to hurry something No, that's along fine. I just couldn't remember whether it was on, and that was the purpose of my question. So yeah. we didn't so, open a public hearing because we didn't notice it for it yet. Right. So the motion on page uh, three 
would be to table it to September 15th, at which time a public hearing would be held. A motion for so, so moved. Oh. Oh. Having made completed by Jim. Yeah. Best. Be it ordered that the town center amendments, which increase the density allowed for multifamily units, be tabled to the regular September 15th, 2009 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Second. Motions having been made by uh, uh, Jim Hubner and seconded by Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. <laughs> motion carries 6 nothing. at which time a public hearing shall be held. I hear a motion to adjourn. So, or, so moved. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. I have a plan I need to sign. Uh, I moved somebody, I mean. Okay.